What's up guys? Today on Robbie's Reviews, we're at Sebring International Raceway, where I'm currently sitting in the 2020 Lamborghini Urus, which my friend Marcio has very generously given me to uh, take around the track, not the actual road course, but around the complex to review, get my take on what it's like to drive, and check out all the cool features. It's in this amazing super SUV. All right, let's go check it out. All right, here she is, the 2020 Lamborghini Urus. This example is finished in Giallo Aug, or Aug, I'm not sure if I'm butchering that or not, but uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. So the Lamborghini Urus is all-wheel drive, front engine. It's a pretty much full-size SUV, more of a uh, coupe design. Um, produces 641 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. Now that's good for a zero to 60 of 3.2 seconds, all the way to a top speed of 190 miles an hour, making it one of the world's fastest production SUVs. And uh, there's no more appropriate place to review it other than Sebring International Raceway, home of the famous 12 hours of Sebring, the endurance race for IMSA. And uh, it's definitely at home at this racetrack. And it's quite cold and windy out today, so please excuse if there's any wind noise. But um, this is not going to be a very, very long or in-depth review. I've actually driven the Urus a few times before, so I've already formed a solid opinion on what it's like to drive. This is more going to be checking out the interior and some of the cool exterior features. And the silhouette of this vehicle is just very, very streamlined. Even though it's an SUV, it looks like it just cuts through the air. You actually have 23-inch wheels, which are optional. But aside from that, you have the largest carbon ceramic brakes ever fitted to a production vehicle. They're just massive and the stopping power this vehicle has is unmatched. Well, for its weight class at least. And moving around the back, you have that nice coupe sloped roof here. And you have the quad exhaust, the parking sensors. Again, full LED taillights. So, it still is an SUV. And with that, you can expect a lot of cargo space. And, uh, get plenty. You can actually fold down all the seats and uh, even with the sloped or coupe-like roof line, you still get a lot of luggage space. You got the controls for the seats here. You can actually raise and lower the rear air suspension. So if we press this, the vehicle is actually lowering right now. And there's a blank here. It looks like it's for the power seat. So I think they're just manually folding seats. But nonetheless, if you hit the air suspension here, you can raise it back up and it instantly goes back up. We've got this nice cargo shelf here on the cover. For, uh, your luggage or any personal belongings. Close it up, you see the button there. You've got a nice full panoramic roof. And this color, it's a uh, it's not metallic or pearl, it's really just like a high gloss color. It looks very good, even in this uh, kind of gloomy weather. But uh, right now we're going to turn on the headlights, the taillights, so you guys can check them out. We'll put the hazard lights on as well. So step inside, put the ignition on. So we have the fronts here, put the headlights on, and as well as the rear fog lights and the hazard lights. And soft closed doors, of course. That's what you'd expect from a quarter million dollar SUV. And as you can see, you've got all the latest LED technology. So you have the LED indicators here in the mirrors. So you've got those very, very bright, active LED headlights and you have the high beam in the middle here. And then you've got the switch back turn signals. So it goes from ERL to turn signal. All right, so now let's step inside and check out the interior of the Urus. And the cars are starting to run again, so now it's nice and quiet, especially thanks to those very, very thick windows. It's not the, uh, the double laminated windows, that's an option, but nonetheless, these are very, very soundproof windows. So we'll turn off the hazard lights, put the lights back to auto. Now we're going to give a little startup, and uh, we'll get some startup and rev sound clips in a little bit, as well as uh, some really toned down driving here. We can't speed around the complex, but 
we can uh, somewhat get some nice driving dynamics from the Urus. All right, so to start it up, similar to the Aventador, Huracan, and other Lamborghini models, you just flip this up, put on the brake, start, and uh, it's, it starts up in neutral and you've got the electronic parking brake. So if you wanted to put it in drive or first gear, just undo the parking brake there, hit the right paddle shifter, and it goes into first, and you can go into manual mode if you hit it again. And uh, to put it in neutral, you would just hit both paddles simultaneously. Holding the camera, it's kind of hard, but I'll try. There we go, into neutral. And um, so, obviously the Urus is a completely new territory for Lamborghini. They've never done a modern SUV like this before. So the Urus was first introduced in 2018. And uh, this being a 2020, nothing's really changed. There's a few new options and color schemes and stuff you can order. But um, options-wise, this is very fairly loaded. And especially when it comes to the color scheme on this car, the uh, contrast stitching is actually the same as the body color outside. It goes all down the doors, all around the door handles here, all on the seats. It's got like this hexagonal stitching, this like contrast stitching here, and it's nice and quilted for the uh, heated and cooled seats. And then you have the Lamborghini crest there on the seats, and as you can see, a pretty roomy back seat. We'll check out in a little bit. A uh, full glass panorama roof. And the entire headliner is Alcantara. The LED reading light there. The nice frameless rear view mirror. And everything's LED and you just touch it, you just swipe, really swipe it, it turns on. And uh, as far as mood lighting and ambient lighting, it really does have the latest in ambient lighting. I'm not sure if we can go anywhere here dark enough to show off the ambient lighting, but uh, we'll see if we can find somewhere. So very similar to the Audi Q8 and the Q7 and some other Audi and VW models, you have the double infotainment screen here. So you have the main navigation, infotainment, radio, all the apps, and you have all your AC controls and seat controls down here. So you've got the seat ventilation, temperature here, auto start stop, hill descent assist, you have your home button here, go home. You can turn off the screen if you want. Um, just all your, your circulator, AC controls. Here's your volume control here. And something new that Lamborghini has done is the Anima control. So you have Strata, Street, Sport, Sport Mode, Corsa, Race, Sabia, Sand, Terra is, I just believe, Dirt or Gravel. And then Nieve is Snow. And uh, you can really go to any mode you want. So you got Strata, Sport, Sabia, and uh, in sport and on, it actually opens the exhaust valves and adjusts the RPMs. So we'll go back to Strata. Sport mode, the gauge changes a little bit. Corsa, it really changes. This is actually my personal favorite look for the uh, completely refigurable gauge cluster. So you have all your information on the left and the right, the fixed gauges, fuel gauge, temperature, and then uh, you can put pretty much anything you want, navigation, power, torque. You put the view button here, all the, uh, the vehicle information. Got the G meter there. And then the uh, fuel range at the top. And um, very, very basic light controls. You have auto on here, front fog lights, rear fog lights. And uh, we'll close that. We'll actually we'll go back to Strata so the exhaust valves close. Uh, you've got your park button here. Close that. And uh, to go into reverse, just hit this forward. You've got your 360 degree camera. And uh, for park, you just P and then M for manual. So we'll put it into first gear now so we can use ego mode. So this is basically the reconfigurable individual mode. So if you hit this button, it actually controls the uh, setting for the all wheel drive system. So sportive, smooth, medium. And then for the steering here, the same thing so you basically control that and the suspension stuff like that and um, that's pretty much it down here you've got your electronic parking brake your 360 camera auto start stop driver assistance um, this is blank here so this doesn't have that option but uh, little storage cubbies two decent sized cup holders and for the center console you have a wireless charging pad 
it's really not much you can put in there other than your phone, some business cards, and a pen maybe. You have some charging ports. Um, the glove box is actually very, very generous. You put a lot in there, water bottles, phone cases, uh, glass cases. And there's really no storage up here. It's basically just your speaker, Bluetooth speaker, the lighting here, and uh, your controls for the panoramic roof. All right, so going around to the back. So the passenger seat is actually pretty far back and I've got enough room, I'm comfortable. Got the air vent speakers here on the B pillar. You have all your dual zone climate controls. You have an armrest that comes down. With cup holders, some little storage hooks there. The visibility out the back is really not that bad. And uh, the back windows are a good size. And you don't feel like you're cramped, you can see out pretty good. You can see the cars racing by. Alright, so now we're going to go get a startup and some rev clips and then we're going to drive it around the complex a little bit. And uh, that should do it for this review of the 2020 Lamborghini Urus. Once again, I just want to thank my friend Marcio for allowing me to take the truck around the track and, uh, you know, have a little fun with it, review it, and uh, play with all the cool toys and gadgets inside. See you next time, guys. driving the 2020 Lamborghini Urus around uh, Sebring International Raceway and uh, well we're not going on the racetrack we are going to drive around the complex a little bit nothing fast or driving briskly or anything just uh, getting a feel for it and from the brief time that I've spent with it so far um, I mean it rides amazingly it's not the first time that I've driven the Urus so honestly I mean I can tell you that it rides like any luxury vehicle should uh, it's got active air suspension and I don't know if you can hear the race cars going around right now but they sound amazing and uh, it's got plenty of power, I mean 600 plus pound-feet of torque and horsepower, it's all-wheel drive. I mean, 0 to 60 comes up in 3.2 seconds. It uh, handles like a sports car and feels like a Lamborghini, yet I have my massage seats and my ventilated seats on right now, or now I do. And uh, the touchscreen, I mean, it's great. You can use the all the controls down here, but really it's just, it's just the way a Lamborghini should drive, honestly. So the Urus is four-wheel drive, but it also has four-wheel steering. And that's not only good for cornering, but also practicality in a parking lot situation or uh, just general maneuverability around town. And uh, you can feel it, it's active. Below a certain speed, the rear wheels move in the opposite direction of the front wheels. And above a certain speed, the rear wheels move in the same direction. So you get a very much handling on rails feeling. And uh, being high up in an SUV, it still feels like a Lamborghini. I mean, the steering wheel, everything. It's just the controls, the drama and theater you get when you drive it. It just all feels good. And uh, in Corsa mode, the gears hold a lot longer than I would like. So I'm gonna drop it down into sport mode. The exhaust quiets up a little bit and the gauge changes, or the gauge cluster. But it's still just a very, very fun vehicle to drive. So we'll be able to do a little launch control for you guys. Nothing too crazy, just to basically show how it's activated. Alright, so line up right here. Very similar to other Lamborghini models. Uh, for thrust mode or launch control, foot on the brake, you have to at least be in sport mode or Corsa. We'll go into Corsa mode so the gauge cluster changes. 
and uh, foot on the brake. This is launch control possible. And you let go. And it just, I mean, it, it's a rocket ship. And the fact that this is an SUV and just the way that it reacts, and so this is a good example for the rear wheel steering. It just handles amazingly. Downshifts are quick. It has a uh, eight-speed ZF automatic transmission. Uh, it's, the software is very, very nicely programmed. Uh, the transmission reacts very quickly. Downshifts, upshifts, no problem, especially in Corsa mode. And uh, while we don't have any sand or dirt or snow to go over right now, and I don't think Marcio would appreciate that, uh, you can rest assured that the Urus is just as capable off-road as it is on-road. So you've got all the different modes. So it's got Sabia. So you have the angle, like the yaw sensor for the Urus. It's the same for Terra and uh, Neve, which is snow, and it changes the little graphic. Back in Strata or Street, Sport mode, the gauge changes and traction control turns off or it's limited. And uh, in Corsa, it's full on race car. You get lots of nice cracks and pops and uh, sport or Corsa mode from that exhaust. And uh, it still has things like cylinder deactivation, auto start stop, uh, and a full suite of self-driving features. I mean, honestly, yes, it's $250,000 and that's a lot more than most people can afford, but for what you're getting, it's a very, very nice package.